Ah, Professor. Always a pleasure to see you. I wonder, might you have a moment to chat? Come now, you have no need to be on guard. I'd never cause you harm. You're far too valuable a specimen, uh, well, that is to say, too valuable a member of the Academy staff. Indeed, the further my crest research progresses, the closer you come to learning the truth of your heritage. Is it not so? When I learned you bore the lost crest, the very crest of flames itself, I set about learning everything I could about your past. What was the origin of your bloodline? How have the events of your life been shaped by your lineage? I became somewhat obsessed, I must admit. Nothing so crass as an investigation. No, I researched. I spoke to mercenaries whom you've worked with in the past to learn about your life before the Academy. Of course, I also contacted Gerald and his mercenary friends. Your father does keep rather interesting company. I'm excited to share with you what I learned, but I do ask that you correct me if I am mistaken on any account. The story begins with Gerald serving as captain of the Knights of Seros. There was a woman at the monastery with whom Gerald was quite close. At first, it seemed obvious this mystery woman was your mother. Alas, that cannot be the case. The timing is all wrong. As it was told to me, the woman in question passed away shortly before Gerald left the monastery. Yet your birth occurred sometime later, while Gerald was taking work as a mercenary. This, of course, presumes your age is accurately reported. If you were born sooner, well, the story would be quite different, would it not? It is intriguing, though, yes? Why is your age so difficult to pin down? For example, Gerald never once spoke of his time serving as Captain of the Knights. That's quite a secret to keep for all those years. In the end, your old acquaintances had little definitive to say about either of you. However, they all agreed on one thing. Your father and yourself were a strong pair. Warriors to be respected and feared. You in particular. In fact, many came to know you as the Ashen Demon. They say you would destroy your enemies without a hint of emotion on your face. The mercenaries I spoke to revered you as a living legend of sorts. So, that is what I learned. And, I admit, it is barely more than I knew before. The next step in my research is to ask your blood for answers, and hope that it is more forthcoming than your past acquaintances. How are you doing, Professor? Would you care to join me for a cup of tea? It occurs to me that whenever we chat, I have a tendency to pester you with my questions and theories about your history. It seems only fair to speak on the topic of myself for once. And perhaps you might feel more positively inclined toward my research if I shared my own story. I am quite pleased to hear you're interested. Yes, quite pleased. Well, I suppose I should begin at the beginning, eh? I was born into a noble house of the Empire. Not a large house, mind you, but noble all the same. Our land holdings were small, but our bloodline was quite strong. So, as you can imagine, there were many of us in the family who carried the power of crests. I myself bear a minor crest. Our family's abundance of crests may be part of the reason I've been interested in the topic since I was just a boy. I dedicated myself to my studies, and after years of effort, I became lead crest scholar at the Empire's largest research institution. 
I had only imperial blood, and thus imperial crests, at my disposal in the Empire. So I came to Garrick Mock and devoted myself to my research during my time as a professor. My progress is slow, but with each revelation, I move ever closer to the answers I have sought for decades. Your cooperation as the bearer of the Crest of Flames ensures my research will continue to advance. In fact, it may bring me ever closer to the goal of uncovering everything there is to know about crests. I do hope you shall continue helping me advance in this field of study. Together, we will solve the mystery of your Crest of Flames, and our world will be the better for it. Shall we proceed? My lab instruments are fully prepared. I have a great number of tests I'm excited to carry out. No, no, don't worry. They won't hurt one bit. Which means that there are some elements of your power that cannot be explained by current theory. Although this may lead to a discovery that alters the very fabric of Crest research. Oh, pardon me, Professor. I became lost in thought and I do tend to ramble. I suggest we call it a day. Do you concur? No, no, you mustn't push yourself too hard. When you are not in battle, you are so often here with me. I get so energized speaking with you. Well, I must remember to pull my head out of the clouds. That said, Perhaps we should discuss things unrelated to crests from time to time. Some sort of silly, light-hearted topic might be nice, eh? I'm not especially skilled at small talk, alas. Let me see. Perhaps we should discuss... Hmm... I know! Food! Not my strong suit, the culinary arts, I do enjoy a good meal. Which kind of food do you prefer, Professor? Sweet or spicy? Same as myself. Yes, indeed. Oh, now my stomach is growling. An old colleague of mine theorized that those who bear crests favor sweet flavors over spicy. She suggested that the crest exerts some manner of influence over... Oh, there I go again. How embarrassing. We were supposed to be avoiding talk of crests, weren't we? Terrible habit of mine, finding a way to turn any conversation towards crests. I really should find a way to stop that. That is kind of you, Professor, but it's all right. If you were to lose your patience with me, it could have an incalculable impact on my research. That sort of thing has happened in the past, you know, back when I was still in the Empire. At first, any lady I was spending time with would titter and say she didn't mind if I talked about crests. But at some point, she would always become fed up and stop listening to what I had to say. In the end, Invariably, while I was particularly focused on my research, she would write to say we were done. I will do everything I can to keep that from happening this time. So falls the curtain on our time of war. Though I suppose one can never say all is over and done. You have much still to do and I have miles to go before I achieve my own dreams. We both have many hardships in store for us, don't you think? <laughs> Indeed. Well, that talk aside, I have a bit of a proposition for you. I believe it is better to travel the path through life with someone else, rather than go forward alone and you are indispensable to my research. No, that's not the full truth. 
yes, you are indispensable to my research, but also to my life. Altogether, I mean. I haven't any idea how to treat a woman properly, and so I've long thought I would spend my life alone. But then, well, I met you, and I want to share everything with you. If you happen to feel the same way, or, well, that is to say, would you accept this ring? Did I make you wait? Now, there is an unexpected development. My goodness. Well, since the feelings are mutual, I suppose there's no need to hold ourselves back any longer. Don't you agree? If so, I say we begin the next phase of our research. I wish to learn everything about you. Ready? No, no. There's no need to be ready. I'm not planning any tests. I don't want the power of your crest. I want you. First things first, I'd like to do a thorough study. And in return, perhaps you would care to learn all there is to know about me. I've never been the subject of someone else's research before, but I am open to the prospect. I can think of no one more suitable for the task than the woman I love. The future. Ah, I mean our future. It offers quite a lot to look forward to. I can't wait to see the results of this new undertaking.